Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we're answering the question, who is Tableau Pulse for? As ever, let's get stuck in. Now, to answer this question, I actually don't need any sort of screen recording going on, but I'll have Tableau Pulse in front of me just in case we need to go to it because I think it might be useful context. To answer this question, I think it's super important to go back a few months because I think the writing has been on the wall that this was always going to be the direction that Salesforce took in one way or another. But at the same time, I don't think anyone could have predicted the um, you know resurgence of AI in every single piece of technology on the planet. This year, if your tool or piece of software doesn't have AI in it, you're basically behind the curve to the point where even big companies like Apple are struggling to get this kind of capability into their devices because of the, the way they build products. And so AI has completely changed the game in terms of what companies are talking about and the features that they're putting into their products primarily because I think they're trying to please the market. They're trying to please the investors and the expectations of their customers because their customers are hearing about AI and all the great things it can do. And so people are looking to have these features in their products. Now, if we go back a bit more, there was already some change happening in the background in terms of Salesforce turning Tableau into the product it wants it to be. <clears throat> and this change is actually a lot broader and it goes right back to what I would say changes in terms of the way the leadership is working, changes in terms of the way uh, Tableau is run. And then finally, the product placement of Tableau is sort of a finesse and you have to be really paying attention to the long story. I'll try and make a video of this, um, you know, to sort of try and cover the nearly four years now that Salesforce has owned Tableau. But it's a very careful managed journey and Salesforce is quite good at this. Salesforce is very good at acquiring companies and getting what it wants out of them and changing the the sort of course. I think it's it's uh, it's something that a lot of people who've worked under companies that have been acquired by Salesforce have said. And I think we have to be clear that when Salesforce bought Tableau, they definitely had a vision. And that vision maybe wasn't necessarily the one that Tableau was on when it was acquired. And the journey that Tableau was on when it was acquired was essentially a journey to the cloud. Um, we had Adam Solipsky, who was previously at Amazon, uh, came to be the CEO of Tableau, then went back to Amazon when Andy Jesse took the role of Jeff Bezos when Jeff Bezos stepped down. Uh, Adam Solipsky then took Andy Jesse's role at, back at Amazon. So uh, Adam Solipsky went back. But the journey that Tableau was on was always about going to the cloud and moving its capabilities towards the cloud. And to be fair, that makes sense. It is one of the biggest criticisms of Tableau, especially in the general analytics sphere. A lot of a lot of people will critique the fact that Tableau isn't crowd cloud ready, and yet at the same time, Tableau will get a ton of stick for not having certain capabilities inside of Tableau Server, the non-cloud version. And so it's a pretty hard shift to, to manage. But nonetheless, I think Salesforce were always going to push Tableau's products towards the cloud. Because in essence, if you look at Salesforce, it's a SaaS platform. Everything runs in the browser. Everything runs on the platform. And it just makes it much easier for Salesforce to control the way it manages the whole setup. Having this product that kind of goes against that was definitely going to be something they were going to change over time. Does it mean they're going to get rid of desktop? Not really. I don't think that's ever the case. But I do think the way Tableau Desktop is built will fundamentally change. And it'll work very similar to the way Tableau Prep work. You might think that Tableau Prep has a desktop version. But in actual fact, it's running web code on your desktop. It's not running sort of native uh, desktop C sharp or whatever C++ code on the laptop. It's running something called Electron in the background to actually run the interface and give you that desktop like experience. But it's actually just in the browser, which is why you get feature parity with the browser version. It's the same code, just doing different things in different places. Now, the next question to answer is, the tea leaves that were at previous conferences. At the last conferences, the last two conferences, Tableau have been very bold to say that, look, we've had a strong legacy, 20 years serving this particular audience, but the job is not done. There are this massive wave of people across this chasm, I'll put the graphic up on screen, that are not being served. And so what Tableau had think has been saying for the last eight years, very clearly at conferences, is that they're moving on. They're moving on from serving what we would call their traditional user base, the dashboard builders. And they're moving on to address the consumers of those dashboards. They want to build a product that the consumers of those dashboards can use. And, and that is in essence what Tableau Pulse is for. Tableau Pulse is trying to address that need. But there's a huge problem. <laughs> and this problem is essentially this. 
Tableau has spent 20 years marketing to this legacy user base. And this legacy user base is the desktop audience, the server audience. And with Tableau Pulse, they have a product that is sort of spread across these two user bases. On one hand, it requires the creators who have that license to build these metrics, the explorers, to build all these metrics, metric definitions, get the data in shape to make it work. And by the way, they have to do that inside of the Tableau platform using published data sources and a couple of other factors. And, you know, in some places, those features are still lacking. Those features are still things that people want to see more of. And I know I'll say that and people will ask, oh, what features? But really, you just have to use Tableau every single day. And I'll be upfront and I'll say there is a large body of Salesforce product managers who've not lived with the products for longer than five years. And if you have lived with the product for that long, you just know where those edges are. You don't need to ask that question. And so um, a real sort of thing we're going to see over time is as Tableau develops Tableau Pulse, are they going to bring some of those product knowledge items that you should know, things you should know about the 20 years of Tableau into Tableau Pulse, and are they going to make that work? But nevertheless, that's getting sidetracked. Going back to this point about who Tableau Pulse is for, Tableau now has to market to the consumers of dashboards. And yet they've never really had a channel or a mechanism to market to those people. And so Tableau Pulse fundamentally, I think, is for everyone who's been consuming dashboards, but wants the ability to control the metrics that they get. They want to be able to choose the cuts, choose the levels, and they really don't care about dashboards. In fact, all dashboards are is they present them with a way to basically extract their data. And that's like, let's be honest here. If you built the dashboards, the like 90% of the time, people are just right clicking, exporting the data. I know people lock that down, you know, try and build better features. But in real terms, I think there's a large body of people who just haven't warmed up to dashboards because of that exact fact. It doesn't give them what they want. And in essence, I think Tableau Pulse is trying to address that. Now, is Tableau Pulse original? Absolutely not. Have you seen something like Alteryx Auto Insights? You could almost argue that Tableau Pulse is a very good clone of that. There are also similar ideas outside in the analytics space, people coming up with lots of different ways. If you go to Dribble and look at the way that uh, UX designers are visualizing analytics dashboards, a lot of the thought there, it's not original, but it's been applied to the Tableau platform and it comes with the benefits of the Tableau platform. And that is absolutely original thinking that Tableau has. It's a USP of Tableau the platform and the fact that there are already users using it. And so if we try and tie all of this together into sort of one big narrative, Tableau is in essence trying to stay relevant. You know, AI has caused this mega shift towards the space that no one really has any advantage in. And you can't really sort of fall behind. And so where AI is helping Tableau is it's able to sort of pull forward some of these insights that are really hard to get to and make it easier for people to access them. The, Biggest beneficiaries of those are going to be the consumers of dashboards, the previous consumers of dashboards, the previous consumers of reports. They are who Tableau Pulse is really geared at. But, and this is the big but, it needs creators and developers to build these metrics well, make sure that the data models behind them are working and functioning well. And a big critique I've still had with Tableau Pulse is this. Are the tools that those people have good enough, sufficient enough, to actually allow them to do that job at scale. Because if I go back to Tableau Pulse and I go in here to create a new metric definition, the breadth of what you can create, in fact, let's not create a new metric definition. Let's go to an existing one. Let me go to browse metrics and I'll just take one of these metrics, okay? This is, this is one data source, uh, Superstore. You all know Superstore. I've created two metrics, okay? And two metric definitions, profits and sales. And over here on the right hand side, I have related metrics. Now, here's the kicker. If I go into profit and I edit this definition, it's one definition, dead easy. But depending on the number of dimensions I have, the number of possible outcomes is actually crazy. If you just think about it for two seconds, every category multiplied by every subcategory, multiplied by every city, by region, by product, by customer name, the possibilities are endless. And so people are going to create an absolute sea of metrics. And one thing we've not really had is the ability to check the data at that scale. And the only real tools that sit, you know, really capable of doing that are actually outside of the Tableau platform. 
yes, Tableau Prep can go into that level of granularity and allow you to sort of do everything you need. Yes, Tableau Desktop has been the place where this has all been done and we've got the data model sort of being enhanced, but there's still something missing. There's still something missing to allow us to be able to, you know, track things like lineage from here all the way back into the source data systems. Make sure that we're getting metadata from all of these metrics coming back to us and saying, hey, these are the most popular combinations of this metric definition along with these dimensions. We want to make sure that all these aspects work and everything is going to work well. So maybe I worry for no reason, but in my experience, I've worked with so many companies that think they have a handle on their data and fundamentally, actually, they realize that the scale of the challenge and their aspirations, well, they far exceed their capabilities. And that's why I'm a consultant, because we get brought in to help fix those problems. And Tableau Pulse, it doesn't address that problem. In fact, it only makes it more obvious. And I was kind of hoping that Tableau Pulse will not only help address the consumption problem, but it will also help address the, uh, you know, let's call it the creation problem, if that makes sense. Maybe that's not the product Tableau was going for, but hey, I think that's the product we need. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.